you've done any of the previous upgrades to another version of SQL Server, really nothing to see here move along. Uh, if you've never upgraded a SQL Server, it's you know there's a lot of considerations we've covered these extensively throughout the course so there's really no need to rehash all this and just put it in the light of R2 I'm going to walk you through some links some tools that are R2 specific but really there's nothing there's just nothing fancy about it you've got some considerations some ideas but we've covered so much already there's no reason to to really just repeat ourselves so what can you upgrade from well, you could obviously upgrade from 2008. We talked about how that is a relatively minor thing, right? There's only a few features here and there uh, that are majorly changed. It, you know, you'd, you'd really have to have already purchased and owned the licenses for R2 to warrant an upgrade from SQL Server 2008. I mean, who's going to go spend a hundred grand to have rolled out a four-node cluster or, or a three, a two-node cluster of SQL 2008, and then two years later do that to R2? It's just not likely that you would find the cost savings from that. Now, I think that a lot of the folks that are upgrading to R2 are really doing so because they were on SQL 2005. That lasted about five years for them, maybe six years, and now they're looking at replacing that hardware. They want to take advantage of the new Nehalem, the new Sandy Bridge, the new processors, uh, multiple cores. Right? They see a lot of advantages, and they also see that SQL Server 2012 is coming down and is going to charge you you know, 10 times as much in some cases for the exact same, basically the same hardware, and they want to go ahead and get this upgrade into R2 now so they can save money for many years to come. Some of you guys probably are still running SQL 2000 on some old boxes, and maybe you want to just consolidate. We talked about consolidation, virtualization, so maybe that's kind of part of your uh, plans as well. So these are your suggested paths here. Uh, I doubt really anybody's going on with 7.0, 6.5 uh, at this stage. There's a decent white paper called Why Upgrade to R2 uh, from the Microsoft marketing folks. It's just decent. You know, it's only like 13, 14 pages, so you may want to dig it, uh, check it out. So what's your first thing that you have to do is figure out in R2 which edition will you go with, right? Standard, enterprise, parallel data center, whatever, right? So once you have that figured out, then you start looking at the supported upgrade paths. Okay, so for example, what we need to talk about are two things, version and edition, okay? We talked about the versions that are supported. We can upgrade straight, okay? But what about the edition? What if you want to go from Enterprise Edition of SQL 2008 to Standard Edition of SQL Server 2008 R2, right? Okay, so you, there is a document that you can go read that will walk you through whether or not your edition is supported as a direct upgrade. Okay. Now, you know, I, we talked about this considerably uh, early on in the course. What about the upgrade advisor? I think you should go run it, pick up on any of the identified issues. It always has issues. It's always going to report something back to you. So fix it, right? If it's necessary, a lot of the things that it will report are not necessary. So it's good to just be aware. Um, I will caution you if you are staying on the same machine so you're not buying a new server and putting this on a new server. Just make sure that you meet, you know, the right hardware. Okay. Uh, also, deprecated elements. If you find that the uh, upgrade advisor says, "Hey, you're using some old SQL," you know, fix that stuff. All right. So that's step three. Now, step four is where your brain has to kick in, and this is where you really have to kind of spend some some thinking time, pen and paper get it together. Got a lot of questions that you have to go over. Are you buying a new server? Or are you reusing the existing hardware? Okay. What about this? Do you need to upgrade your entire SQL Server instance? Or is it just one database that you need to upgrade? Okay, Or two databases? Uh, do you need both servers to be online at the end of this? Do you for example, let's say you're upgrading from SQL 2005 because you have an asset tracking database that's just simply 
grown too big and you want to take advantage of some new hardware. Will you need to keep the existing databases on that 2005 server and just migrate that one database? So therefore both would need to be online at the end of the operation? Or are you going to do the whole thing? Right? Now, it doesn't matter which one you choose. We talk about how to do it in two different options. One, an in-place upgrade. Or two, installing a new instance of R2 and then moving or copying databases slash objects slash logins slash jobs slash etc. <laughs> okay, so those are going to be your two choices. Okay? I'm going to walk through them here uh, with you here. Okay, so let's just talk about first up the in place upgrade. Notice what's going down right here. It's automatically replacing. So when you do an in-place upgrade, you're not changing servers. You're taking your SQL Server 2008 R2 DVD, you're putting it in the CD-ROM, and you're hitting Setup, and it automatically replaces it. Okay, so you run the installation on the target machine. So you go to your server, you put your DVD in, you run the R2 installation. Okay, it automatically detects that you have a previously installed SQL Server version, and then you can automatically upgrade. Okay. In an in-place upgrade, everything is brought over. Your databases, right? all the tables, the indexes, the jobs, everything is brought over to the new version. Okay? Your logins are brought over. If you're using SA, it still has the same password. All your logins and all the same permissions are brought over. Okay? One little thing to note is this is going to take the instance offline during the upgrade. Now, at the end of this, you will only have one instance. Your connections won't have to change. Your users are still connecting to the same instance. None of that has to change. Okay? You're simply replacing in an in-place upgrade. You are replacing on the same server with a newer installation. Okay? I will caution you to make sure you take and test your backups before you get started with this because if you do have to roll back to the prior version you have to uninstall R2 then you have to install the previous version okay? uninstalling R2 does not roll it back okay? so you have to then install the previous version then get it back up to the patching level that it was prior to running the upgrade and then you have to restore your backups and that looks like awesome fun doesn't it doesn't that sound amazingly great Right? You can see, hear your boss just yelling at you. How's it going to be ready? <laughs> All right, now at the end of your un in place upgrade, R2 replaces what was the previous version, right? Okay, so, like for example, we just draw it out here. We used to have SQL 2K5, right? After running the upgrade, don't have that anymore. Now we have R2 installed. The instance doesn't change. Our clients don't have to change their configure uh, their connection strings at all to connect to us. Okay, the databases are upgraded. So your master, your model, uh, your user databases, they are all upgraded to R2. Okay, one instance still there. Okay, now when would you use this? This is when you want to reuse your existing hardware. If you do not have to uh, buy new hardware. There you go. If you want to replace the entire instance, this is when you want to use an upgrade, okay, or an in-place upgrade. Okay? So that's an in-place upgrade. In-place equals replacement. Got it? Okay. Now, a side-by-side -side upgrade is when you don't necessarily want to upgrade the entire instance or when you want to upgrade it maybe even to a new computer. Okay? So this involves migrating the objects between two instances. Okay? So here we go to our target machine. Maybe it's a new server, maybe it's not, maybe it's the same one. Okay? We install R2. Okay? We then manually move or copy the objects from the source to the destination. Now what's an object? Could be a table, could be a database, could be a job, could be a login. I had to use that sort of generic term object because it covers so many different areas. Both instances are online. It's important to note 
your users will have to change connection strings to connect to the new server in a side-by-side -side upgrade, right? At the end of a side-by-side -side upgrade, we have two servers online, right? So right here, we would have our SQL 2005 if we were doing this. Oops, I messed up some, right? And then over here, here's our new R2 server, and we can move or copy the database. So let's just have an asset database. Okay. So we'll have an asset management database. Maybe we move it from 2K5 to R2. All of the rest of SQL Server 2005 is running fine. All the other databases on SQL Server 2005 haven't been touched. The only thing we've done is we've installed this new copy of R2 and we've now moved the asset database from 2005 to R2. And when we did that, important piece, it upgraded that database and it cannot go backwards. Once we do this upgrade, once it upgrades the internal structures of the pages to SQL Server 2008 R2, it can't change them back to what SQL Server 2005 used to be. So again, you have to have a good backup to be able to roll back. Okay. So when you would use a side-by-side -side upgrade, you're moving to a new server. Right? You can't reuse the existing hardware. You've run your SQL 2005 server for seven years. You're hitting the limits of it. You know that you're going to have some downtime. You say, I want to go ahead and install a brand new server. You go buy, you know, requisition a new server, get that ready. Okay. Or, and, when you want to copy objects. Notice that I did not say move, right? I said when you want to copy objects to a new instance or server. Okay. Interesting. Maybe that's not so much of an upgrade, right? But then here's the when you want to move those selected objects, right? Maybe you only want to move that asset database. The rest of your databases you want running on that old existing SQL 2005 server. You just want to move the asset database to the new server. In that case, you got to go to your clients. You got to change their connection strings so that those on the that are using your asset applications are going to use the new instance. Okay. Now, side by side upgrades. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You could make this. I think most DBAs would really make the case that this can easily be done via backup and restore. This is certainly a safe way to do it. I take a backup of the 2005 database. I restore it on R2. During the restore, SQL Server 2008 R2 will upgrade those page structures to the new format, right? Okay. So, now, and worst case scenario, if the upgrade slash restore doesn't work, has a problem, I got a backup already, right? So a lot of us will, will really do backup and restore. The only thing about backup and restore is it is database at a time. It doesn't restore logins. It doesn't, it doesn't allow you to say, I only want to backup and restore this one table. It's database. So the granularity of backup and restore is at the database level, right? So then if you want to get down to individual objects, or you want to say, I also want to bring over logins at the same time I bring the database over, now you can go down to integration services. Now, the usefulness of some of the integration services tasks for this will be debated by DBAs for a long, long time. Uh, we cover that more in the DBA class, uh, the SSIS course, but this is an option. Okay? T-SQL scripts, I can choose to migrate databases. I can choose, uh, same thing with PowerShell scripts. I can script the data out to a file. I can uh, create schema files, index files. I could do a lot of different options. I don't have to bring an entire database over, right? So just, I think of it this way. Uh, if I'm doing backup and restore here, then I have to do the entire database, okay? All of the other options that I listed, and there are others, by the way, but all of these other options that I listed allow me to be a little more granular, and I can choose specific objects. I could copy the database. I could move the database. Um, I could move only selected tables and indexes, and, right? So it's, there's a lot there. Well, look, I, uh, I think I'll close out with this. There is a fabulous, 
fabulous. We rarely get this sort of fabulousness um, in white paper form. Uh, there's, it's called the Upgrade SQL Server 2008 Technical Reference Guide, and it's almost 500 pages. And it answers everything you need to know. I mean, that's a lot of pages, right? But it's heavily, uh, heavy on the screenshots. It is, it's just fabulous. I can't recommend it enough. If you pull up the PDF that is attached with this video, there's the link. You can just click on the link uh, and go to it. And I, I'll tell you this. It's documents like this that are really, really good that I may not necessarily need for SQL 2008, but they stand as a reference to me when I go to the next version of SQL Server and I want to learn about upgrades. Well, then I can refresh. What was it about 2008 or 2? Oh, okay. And I can compare that to 2012. You know, many times with a new version of SQL Server, it might be several years before the white papers are, you know, that there's a lot of coverage of white papers. Oh, sure, there'll be some coverage of white papers in, in the pre-launch days. There'll be some white papers published in the first year, but it's really not until about year two that the white papers really have covered most of the areas that the previous edition had in white paper coverage. I mean, 487 pages, it takes a long time to come up with a white paper, first off, let alone one that's 487 pages, right? So I'd suggest going and get that.